Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we will talk about exceptions. Exceptions allow us to try and recover from an error which would otherwise crash our program. For instance, we could try accessing the 10th element of an array when the array only is 5 in size. Doing this would crash and exit our program. As programmers, we should always strive to design our code in the least error-prone way. However, there will be cases where we just won't have any control over the situation. For instance, we can't prevent the user from doing some wrong input, or the user may want to load a file which just doesn't exist. In that case, we can't just let the program crash. We have to find an alternative for the user. So let me give you a simple demonstration. We have a string containing the value hello. We know that a string has a size of five elements. Let's try accessing an element by using the character add method. Obviously this will result in an error, because hello is only five elements long. Let's have a look at this error. Exception in fret main, Java language string index out of bounds exception, string index out of range. 10. Well, this is a pretty good description of what's going on here. Accessing the 10th element of hello is just not possible. Now, since this text right here is displayed in red, you can tell that the program actually crashed. We don't want that. We want our program to still be functional, even if we get an error like this. So let's handle this exception. In order to do this, we're going to use the try-catch block. This is a construct that lets us put error-prone code into a position that we can interact with more securely. It starts with a try keyword right here, and we denote its scope with the curly braces. It is then followed by the catch keyword. Similarly to a method, it has a head with a parameter list. We have the data type exception, and we call that object E. Of course, we could have given any other name as well. It also comes with a scope. So let's take our error-prone code and put it into the try block. So now, when the car add method isn't successful, it's going to throw an exception. And that's why it's called a try catch block, because we are trying to catch any exception that might be thrown by a method. So let's take care of any exception that might arise. We can also use our exception parameter to give us a bit more info. By using the getMessage method, we will know exactly what went wrong. So let's go ahead and run this program again. This time, instead of crashing, it went into our catch block and executed the commands that were inside of there. And the error message is just like before. String index out of range, 10. So this time, our program didn't crash. It is still fully functional at this point. We are just not doing anything anymore. Now there are a few things to keep in mind when using try catch blocks. For instance, whenever we are catching an error, we are not going back to the try block. If I run this program right now, we will never get to see the end. This is because at this point, the method threw an error and we went straight into the catch block. Every subsequent statement in the try block will be skipped. If we're not getting an error, however, the program runs just fine. There may be cases where you want to execute a set of commands even though an exception was caught. For that case, you can use the finally block. Every statement that's inside of here will get executed regardless of exception or not. So with no exception we get the end, and with an exception we get the error message, but still the end. I should also mention that you can't put any code in between try, catch and finally blocks. 
you will see we're getting lots of errors here. It's just not possible. Now, there's different kinds of exceptions. If you hover over the car add method and click inside this window, you can scroll down and see what kind of exception it throws. Right here we have an index out of bounds exception, which makes sense since we are dealing with strings. You will notice, however, that in our catch block we are only catching the type exception. So how does that work? Well, whatever kind of exception we are dealing with, whether it's an index out of bounds exception or an illegal argument exception or whatever, in its most generalized form it is still an exception. You could think of it as a hierarchy. So when we are just saying exception, we are catching any kind of exception without any specification. Now this has both its benefits and its disadvantages. The good thing is that we're catching any kind of exception, so our program will never crash. The bad thing is that we're not really specific about how we are handling the error. Because we only can do so much about a general error that we don't really know anything about. Lucky for us though, we can stack catch blocks. We can define multiple cases about how to handle a specific type of exception. Since we know the car add method throws an index out of bound exception, let's go ahead and catch just that. And right here we could define behavior that's tailored to index out of bounds exceptions specifically. Whereas down here, we are dealing with general errors. So whenever we are getting an exception from our try block, our program will run our catch blocks from top to bottom and see which type is the closest match. So if I run the program again, this catch block right here gets executed. So it's a good idea to put more specific catch blocks at the top and more general ones at the bottom. Now, there's more stuff that we can do with exceptions of course, but this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time!